Got an 18 inch by 24 inch panel, paint, spray painted flat black. Got our guidelines, center line, four different sections to represent thin, regular, bold, and heavy. And thin meaning the weight of the, uh, the thickness of the strokes. So the thickness of the actual stroke of the letter would be a, a thin. And laying that out, uh, we take into consideration um, it, it, at least one thing, and that is letter spacing. Now, this this won't be uh, this, this isn't to be um, mistaken for a condensed letter or a condensed version of this, uh, but rather the same letter width. Only just the only thing that's changing is the space between the letters and the thickness of the strokes. So with the letter, with the word, for example, thin, um, we have what, four, four letters, but the I is going to obviously be thin. So, um, you know, and this could be obviously, this is our confines, our center line. So we really have some, a parameter to what we're working with. So if we were going to lay this out, we would say, well, we'll start out, you know, just like we would with a regular, a regular, uh, but we're going to tighten this up just a little bit. But see, the letter is uh, the letter width is still the same as a regular letter. So we've got our you know boundary here, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to tie in the I'm going to tie the um, H and the T together, and this will be the standard width. The I I'm going to I'm going to squeeze in the spacing just a little bit. And then start here, and then this N for thin will be the same width as this H. Uh, the T we're gonna we got our boundary there, so that's our center point, and that's fairly center. I mean, if we were gonna lay this out as a project, we could do it separately on a piece of paper and either do a, a, a transfer or pounce or whatever the case may be. If we wanted this to be dead center, but that's pretty close visually. Uh, then the um, bold, I mean, this actually this would be the regular, the next one. So uh, regular, that's a longer word. So we can just kind of start out by saying, well, let's quickly do it. Regu okay, so I got to start further over. Reg, regular, that's going to work right there. Okay, so. So I can tell that's going to work just by quickly sketching it. And now I'm going to um, redefine it um, so I get that letter structure where I want my boundaries stop there. This will be the E. This comes up high. The G. It's going to descend. Oh, we're going to, oh it looks like it might be encroaching on this um, a little bit in the bottom. And then the U comes out of that keeping the same letter space, I mean uh, letter width, regular, and again this could be laid out on a piece of paper ahead of time, or, and a, or made a pattern, but that came out, that came out pretty good. The distance between here and here, here and here, looks pretty good. When we get to bold, we're going to have to uh, be a lot more mindful of our uh, spacing, our letter spacing. Here it's regular, obviously, so it's standard letter spacing. We don't have to worry about that that much. But when we get to a bold, that's where we have to start thinking about, okay, I've got to be, you know, the, the, the letter space can still be the same. I mean, the letter width is going to still be the same as the other, as the other letters, you know, the standard letter width. We're not extending it. So it's just going to be a standard letter width. But when we get to a place like, for example, this L, this lowercase L, we're going to have to be mindful of our letter spacing because um, if we don't, we're going to, we could be in trouble as far as balance. You know, we could be off with our layout or we could be jamming up against the next letter. So we do have to, and we do have to lay out our, especially our vertical strokes. Not so much our rounds. Our rounds just stay round because we're going to stay on the inside. So that's fine. But when it comes to vertical strokes, we're going to have to lay them out. 
So now we've got this coming out pretty close. It's pretty close to that. Uh, that'll fine. That'll be fine. And then, um, like I said, we're gonna we're consider you know where this is be a bold. So we've got to make sure that our letter spacing between um, has enough airspace and equal airspace uh, throughout the throughout the word. That's what's going to be important. You know, so we've already now we've established this the the width of our stroke as a result of this layout. You know, we know that it's going to be about it's going to be this width. And then when we get to when we get to heavy when we get to heavy, it's full on layout. I mean, it's pretty much the same same what we, as we did with bold, but we're we're even much wider now uh, because we want obviously we're for some reason we're going to be making a very bold version of this see it's still the same width letters the uh, change is going to be drastic and the drastic change will be the inside negative space. It's basically just going to be a little sliver, like a little eighth inch, that could be eighth inch, or whatever, whatever you come up with. That's just going to be a little, little negative space. And this will be the, and we're just going to have to lay it out. So this will just be the, uh, that'll be the thick stroke, and this could be the thin stroke. And everything, and we just we just stay with our outside, stay with the outside, and that's it. We just we just keep this. We just keep our letter, our negative space, the same. You know, that's you know, in wherever there's a vertical stroke. So for this thin, going to use a. Um, Number one Kafka quill. Gonna palette it up. Got white with just a just a teeny tiny drop of black in just to make it a little more opaque on a black surface. And the uh, distance from the top line to the bottom line, three and a half inches. And this is about an inch to the X line. So about a one inch, and then the whole thing from top to bottom is three and a half. And that's the same with all four samples. So just going to go ahead and palette this just like I would did the number two or number yeah the number two brush. Um, obviously going to start with the T and the and a slightly condensed br uh, brush. So tapping the two the edges, and then just making that horizontal line. It's also going to be a flared, so it's just, the strokes are going to be exactly the same, exactly the same strokes. It's just a mechanical system of the, of an alphabet. That's all it is. It's just, and all all we're doing is just transferring the exact same information, uh, creating different effects, just simply by changing our um, our brush size so this is still the same two stroke arc to a flare and I'm going to connect that H to the T so that's why I'm not worried about that end and, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the um, the thick stroke for the T uh, vertical stroke right in the center, come down, and then sweep to the left exactly the same way we did with the, and then spin counterclockwise exactly the same way we do with any, with the uh, number two brush doing a regular stroke. Inside the stroke, then back out, and spin clockwise, and then tap the brush so we can clean up this bottom and this really it looks neat real it looks real elegant um, 
real thin like this. It can make a really neat um, contrast. And I had to put a stop and put a little bit more reducer in. The, the paint was running, running dry and skipping. So there's a there's real chemistry to this because especially light on dark, we most likely will have to do two coats. Depending on the project, depending on the the purpose, the and the um, outcome you want. And so we just continue the exact same way we do with, uh, just come right on out of here, thinking of the outside as our target to get a nice round, and then sweep it to the right. So we got our flare in the bottom already done. Now what we have to do is just add the left side of that stroke for a thick stroke. and sweep that to the left. And for the regular, I'm gonna jump up to a number four quill. For the bold version, we're going to jump up to a Kafka number 12. Come in, tuck down, in, sweep back out, spin, counterclockwise, reload, 50% overlap, touch down, in, back to the right, spin clockwise, touch down. I like that nice little, that neat little shape it makes. And then tuck in spin counterclockwise and then uh, nothing changes here we're 45 degree angle we're gonna follow we're gonna keep stay within our boundaries here we manners for ourselves same letter width just make it a super bold super bold letter come back around and we will be making a little bit more sharper of an angle here it, you know our shape is definitely in the inside is going to change from the mere construction of the letter. The only way we can level it out to make it look like this would be as if we made it, if we extended the letter, made it wider. Now we're gonna come out of that, 45, out to our other point, push down, come back around. So you can see it's gonna be more of a, an angle. The shape is gonna be different out of necessity. And then, because there's just not enough room to level off because we're making it so much thicker. Again, we're staying inside of our boundaries here because we, we don't want our letters to touch unless it's intentional. Push down, thinking of my inside, but now my inside is going to be the one that's going to get altered. When it, as we get bold. Once we get to bold, we're going to be changing the inside. So push down, come around, 
a little bit more focused on the outside. And just for the mere fact that we're going to come back here to make this bold 50%. And this is going to be more of a nice, like, oval on the inside. With room to touch up the outside. But it's this still the same the same idea but now as we get to a bold anything bold and beyond we're gonna have we have to think of the outside We've, that we completely change our our tactics in order to stay within the confines of the of the layout and then the, the L is simply just a, a vertical stroke overlap 50% down, spin clockwise, tap, spin counterclockwise, and then our D, in this case we're going to just, we're just thinking about this outside radius, so I know it's a change, but we, from bold on we're thinking about the outside, because we've got to stay in the confines of our of our see our letters letter spacing needs to be equal no touching again unless it's intentional and then 50 percent that's how we know we're we're in the right we're on the right um we're in the right place to you know right width is overlap 50 percent and then this, we could do the same thing like, like we did with the regular, just to come around and fulfill this. I'm just thinking about this inside, inside uh, oval, like, like it was the O. And then, obviously, now it's just a vertical, basic vertical stroke, just like we do with the L. We want to line ourselves up with the, edge of, the inside edge of that. Sweep in to the left, spin counterclockwise, repallet, reload, repallet, 50% overlap, back in, back out, spin clockwise, tap, tuck, spin counterclockwise. The other fun thing to do with this alphabet is to um, condense and extend it. And it's basically just translating everything into, into, the, into a, a different uh, lettering width. That's all it is. So, I mean, we could even go super condensed like this for some reason if we wanted to. Um, there will be some oddities that occur as a result but that's what's fun about it uh, one is all the rounds will be super you know super ovals thin ovals and uh, letter spacing will be also something will transfer and then um, all of the rounds of the B and the R D all those things they're also going to be arced on the inside. So 
so they're going to be and the trick is to make sure we continue that letter maintain that um, consistent letter width so the the C will be a very tight oval we give ourselves a limit right here that's as far as we're going I'm going past that because we want to maintain the same letter width as the B, the A, and same with the lowercase c. So all these things are transferable, but we just want to make sure that we're staying consistent. So this is where, rather than there being like a flat here and down, we're going to go with a more like a semi ellipse for our for our rounds of our D and our our R our P and then these um, these rounds will just be very tight ellipses and then the uh, of course the antithesis of that would be to extend these and that would mean that we're going to be doing something along the lines of this where everything's going to be the ovals are just going to go the other way so this is just an so we're still going to have the exact same system exact same brush strokes um, <clears throat> the only difference is is the shape of the letter and in this case the V's will be more these will be even longer. Uh, these these um, horizontals will be even longer as a result. So just the opposite of what happens when we condense. And, and these will be ovals.
This is also a fun addition to lettering our spray paint art. We can, after, after the spray paint has thoroughly dried, we can lay it out with a grease pencil and then just do our, do our lettering.